plus get started. Transition of um, specialized business and processes. Now, the first thing is I would need to first of all introduce you to the course and uh, the course is transition of specialized business. And by specialized business, what we simply mean is that other than the conventional businesses that we have, we have other businesses who run not like the conventional businesses and they need to be assessed with that. So the modalities in the operations would warrant a special way of computing the tax liability. By that, we mean that every time they, are, um, they, they have a financial uh, statement at the end of the accounting year, there would be a special way which we have to go about computing their tax liability before they are subjected to tax. Now, uh, today we are looking at the traditional specialized business and processes, and it may interest you to know that we have four types of special businesses, right? Under the specialized business, as a, we have four types of businesses. Uh, confirm if you can see my screen. Yes, you can see your screen. Okay, for this, for this first business, we have companies engaged in transportation and we have two uh, forms of transportation here generally we have four forms of transportation but uh, we may need to put some comments here and let's see first we have the air transport business and we have the shipping transport business and what makes them special is in the sense that they move goods from one or persons from one place to another. So it means that most of the time they will be operating beyond the shores of Nigeria, right? The second one there is telecommunication companies, and they are referred to as um, companies that transmit messages by cable or any form of wireless apparatus. So better and simply put, we call them telecommunication companies. The third one we have, or the second one we have, is insurance companies. The third one we have is banks. The fourth one is unit trust scheme. Those are the four special businesses that we'll be looking because we have a special provisions that is made for them in order for us to compute their tax liability. Are we together, please? Yes. All right. So let's look at companies engaged in shipping uh, or air transportation, cable and wireless business. By in, in short form, we mean that companies are engaging in telecommunication and transportation businesses. And according to section 14 to 17 of CETA, we are a company carries out business by way of sea or air, ship or aircraft owned or shuttered by it, then the profit or loss deemed to be derived from Nigeria shall be the profit or loss that will be assessed to tax in Nigeria. So it means that at any rate, we would we would not suffer or subject um, those um, profits or income earned abroad to tax in Nigeria, but income earned in Nigeria will be subjected to tax in Nigeria. And just to bring perspective to this, To bring perspective to this, what we are saying is that there are seven basic ways or seven basic steps we need to follow for us to assess such companies to tax. So let's quickly uh, go about that. The first one, I use this acronym very well. I say G N G D CAT. Those are the basic steps to assess the companies to tax. So let's, what is G? The first thing I would do, is I will determine the global income. Determine 
the global income and the global there is the G. That's the first thing I will do. I will determine the global income. The second thing I will do is what? I will determine the Nigerian income. And that's where the bulk of the work is the Nigerian income. Because don't forget that it is only income assessed to tax in Nigeria that will be assessed that will be subjected to tax in Nigeria. So let's go back to I would need to okay good. Now, determine the Nigerian income. That's the end part of it, right? And the Nigerian income, we said Nigerian income are income and Nigeria. The problem is how do I identify this income? Can anybody suggest how to identify this income? Hello? Hello. Hi, we are with you, sir. Okay, that's fine. So I was saying to uh, determine the Nigerian income. What you will need to do is you check through the question, and the income that you be assessed to tax in Nigeria will be the Nigerian income. That is income from Nigeria. Income from Nigeria. So, for instance, in the question, you could have income um, like transportation let's look at this question for instance i have here income from passenger out of nigeria income from passenger freight into nigeria income from passenger on other routes out of these three the only income that i'm going to be selecting as nigerian income is income from passenger out of nigeria that means they are in nigeria and they are moving out of nigeria that's the only nigerian income in this question let's look at the second question or the second illustration i have here uh, we have income from cargo freight nigeria to moscow income from passenger freight nigeria to beijing income from passenger freight abu dhabi to nigeria and income from cargo loaded on our route out of all these four what i need is income from nigeria to other routes so meaning that here i have only income from cargo freight nigeria to moscow and income from passenger from Nigeria to Beijing. Those are the two Nigerian income we have here. And that will be the only income that will be subjected to tax. So let's look at Nigerian, determine Nigerian income, and that will be income that is generated from Nigeria. The next will be determine the global adjusted profit. Global adjusted profit. To determine the global adjusted profit is very simple. So I go through this step. I have two options to follow. The first option is net profit. That's net profit. So I would add my disallowed expenses. And of course, this includes depreciation. It includes uh, Donations to unapproved bodies. Uh, Etc. So these are examples of the salary expenses that we have. So I have this, this. Don't worry, we will still solve illustration. So you do this, and then you check if there is any non-taxable income, less non-taxable income, but that will not most times suffice in this case. So less non-taxable income, if any. Mm. 
then here you have your global alternatively you could also do this uh, income Nigeria less our expenses that gives you global all right any questions so far now that is how to determine the global adjusted profit so the next thing you now do is after the time your global adjusted sorry i said income here yeah, sorry i mean global income here yeah, sorry not the company here yeah. global income all right global income is a lot of expenses then you have the global adjusted profit right so there we have global adjusted profits then use your global adjusted profit to the, then after that you now do your depreciation determine the depreciation ratio the depreciation that's the d there and the depreciation ratio will be equal to are we together please are we together, yes. please? Yes. So global depreciation ratio will be uh, depreciation. That's the global depreciation. Divided by those steps. Right. And 100. That will be the global depreciation ratio, right? And in this adjusted profit, what I mean in this context is the global adjusted profit, right? Then the next thing after that will be for me to determine my global adjusted profit ratio. Of course, here, the C here is for you to determine the capital allowance. And to determine the capital allowance is just depreciation ratio ratio multiplied by Nigerian income. That will give me my capital allowance. So that will give me the fraction of the capital allowance. And then the A means compute the Nigerian adjusted profit ratio compute Nigerian adjusted profit. And to do that, what I will do basically is for me to do um, compute first the global adjusted profit ratio. Global adjusted profit ratio. And how do I do that? To do that is very, it's also very simple. I will come here, my workings or my workings, and then say global adjusted profit ratio is equal to global adjusted profit. Are we together, please? Divided by global yeah. income. Times hundred. Are we together, please? Sorry, I mean global income here. Yeah. Mistake. Sorry. So global income. So global adjusted profit over global income times hundred also gives me 
my global adjusted profit ratio. And then I will then come to determine the tax liability. Tax liability. All right, any question, please? Do you have any questions so far? Any question or questions so far? No question. No question, right? All right, in the absence of any question, let's move straight to illustration. Um, Can you please read for me illustration one? Because that reading together will make you uh, understand the question and make us point out some basic facts. That's question one. Yeah. Okay. The profit and loss account of Awell Airways Limited Company, incorporated in Italy in 2006, shows the following in respect of the year ended 31st December 2011. Income from passenger flights out of Nigeria, 1.5 million. Income from passenger flights into Nigeria, 5 million. Income from passenger on other routes, 18 million. Total, 24 million. Hmm? That's good. Nice in total. Okay. Total is 24 million 500. Deduct administrative expenses, 8 million 100,000. Financial expenses, 1 million 700,000. Depreciation, two million nine hundred and forty thousand. Other dissaluable expenses, nine hundred thousand. Total, thirteen million six hundred and forty thousand. Then we have twenty-four million five hundred less thirteen million six hundred and forty thousand. That's ten million eight hundred and sixty thousand. The Federal Inland Revenue Service is satisfied that the tax authority of Italy computed and assessed the profit of companies operating aircraft on substantially similar basis as Nigeria. You are required to calculate the profit of Airwell Always, of Airwell Airways Limited, which will be subject to Nigerian law. You have okay. to screw down, yeah. Okay, which is subject to Nigerian tax. Yeah. Right, so, so we can start, right? Yes. Yeah. Now, let's start first. You know, we said that the first thing would be for us to determine the global income, right? So yes. usually the examiner will tell you what to do and all you need to do is just to copy and paste what the examiner asks you to do as the heading. Because actually that is what is, that's what you want to do basically. So we have calculation, right? right. Of, of profit, or better, sorry, first thing you do is you write the name of the company, All Well Airways Abbey Limited. You have the next thing you would do is calculation of profit. Subjected to tax and now it is important for us to note that companies 
are assessed to tax on preceding year basis. So for this question, for instance, you have December 2011. That will be 2012 year of assessment. I'm sure everybody in this class knows what year of assessment is. Right? Yes, the year under review, which is the preceding year. I didn't get you, please. You said the year under assessment. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So, the first step is what? Determine the global profit. So, I will come. Step one. Determination of global, right? And to determine the global income, what I will do here is we have income from passenger B, right? I have 1,500 B. Yes. All figures in thousands to bring us more perspective. We have income into Nigeria. That's five thousand. I have income from other routes abby as eighteen thousand. so that gives me total income global income how much right yeah twenty four five hundred so now, step two is for me to determine the Nigerian income, Abby. Yes. And I say, to determine the Nigerian income, what I do is not too difficult to. I will check into the question and see what are the incomes that were generated from Nigeria, right? So we said out of only this, we have only 1,500. Um, yeah. um, right? Yes. Any question? Any question, please? None for now. Step three would be for me to determine the global of global just that global adjusted profit we have net profit is how much then eight sixty. And we have depreciation. That's the disallowed expenses, are we? And for that, we first have depreciation. Depreciation is 2940, right? Hello. We are with you, sir. All right. So the next thing we have after that is other disallowed expenses. So we have nine hundred. So we have this plus this, right? We have global adjusted profit. 
Okay. This minus that is to determine global adjusted profit, right? The next thing I will now do is to determine the depreciation ratio. Step four. Determine nation of the depreciation. To determine the depreciation ratio, we said that all I need to do is that the depreciation ratio DR be equal to depreciation. Excuse, excuse me, sir. Yeah. This uh, this depreciation and the uh, I we not so, that is three bit four zero. I would not supposed to add it to sorry. We are adding back. I said add sorry. Add. I was supposed to put this into uh, story. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, that was a mistake. So the position, right? Where my global income, right? Times 100. So here the position is 2940 divided by the global income is 24500, right? Times 100. So we have 2940 divided by 2450. That's 12%, right? Are you with me? Yes. Then the next thing will be for me to use this to determine the capital allowance. So we have the determination of capital allowance. And to determine the capital allowance, what I have basically would be this times the global income is 24,000. Sorry, Nigerian income is 1,500. So I have 180, right? Are you with me, please? Step five. Determine the adjusted right. So to do that, I will first need to compute my gap that global adjusted profit ratio. And that is to determine that that is global adjusted profit divided by global income I'm doing that. And for the global adjusted profit, what is the adjusted profit in this case? The adjusted profit is 14,700. Divided by global income is uh, 24,500 times 100. Right, so we have 2700 over 24. Right? 
That is the global adjusted profit ratio. So now the next thing will now be for me to determine the Nigerian adjusted profit. All right, so I will come here for the question. Say, global. I mean, in general, just their profit. Yeah. So, in general, just their profit, that's how much? That's 60%. Times one five. Okay, please take no more to your mic. I would appreciate if you can mute your mic. Uh, let me move you from here. Okay, that's fine. All right. So we have 900 to be the Nigerian adjusted profit, right? So it says we have that to be Nigerian adjusted profit. So the next thing will be for us to less capital allowance. And we've already determined how much that is or the rate. So that is 12 percent times what do we have? 12 percent of one five. That is wrong. All right, so then we have two profits. John, please check that your formula. I thought I saw 0.1 percent. Is it 12 percent or 10 percent? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you. The total profit just be so. This is the answer. So the question that we should determine the profit subjected to tax in 2012 year assessment. That is how to determine the profit that was subjected to tax in 2012 year of assessment. So uh, like I would always advise, you answer based on the requirement of the question. The question did not ask you to uh, determine the tax liability. So you don't answer, the you don't determine the tax liability in this question because it didn't ask you to determine the tax uh, if, you ask, if you answer, there will be no penalty for it, but there will be no mark for it either. Because the marks will only be allocated around the basic answers or the basic requirements that the question requests from you. Are we together? Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah, please, I, I have a question. Please go ahead. Please, is there a penalty for the... There is a big uh, step that, that uh, if you don't follow the step, that be penalty. Why well, I'm asking? You know, if you check the said step part, the step four, the said uh, compute the global adjusted profit. Compute what? So, compute the global adjusted profit. So I don't know if if we are we are supposed to follow the, the global adjusted uh, profit ratio. Mm. I'm just saying that yes. is are, are, we, are we supposed to follow particular steps? Like if I want yes, to do... the, the, the it doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter which comes first. The idea is you must follow the steps to get your okay. profit. Okay. You understand? You must follow the steps. There is no way you would have gotten the total profit without the adjusted profit ratio. So either you make it the first step, either you make it step four or step five, 
your idea is do the right thing and make sure you get the final answer. Moreover, the steps should be marked. You understand? Okay. But you are not really expected to know step one, step two. Just the, our advice that you follow, you make it follow its order so that you don't mix it up. You don't try to cram it. Understand what you are doing. That's the real okay. idea of it. Make sure you understand what you are doing. Is there no short code? <laughs> Short quotes. This is the shortest quote, yeah. honestly. Hey. But the steps here are not much. If you follow, if you've been in this class, we just said GNGD cat. So if I were you, I only put in my head what's GNGD cat. And once I put that in my head, I think I'm good to run. Okay. Yeah. All right, let me run that again. You determine the global adjusted preload. G stands for global income, N stands for Nigerian income, G stands for global adjusted profit, D stands for depreciation ratio, C stands for capital allowance, um, A stands for the Nigerian adjusted profits, and T stands for the taxable profit or total profit. Tax lab. I think this is this is better. <laughs> Which is better? This is your this your short code. Anyway, that's fine. So let's quickly go to illustration two. Right. All right. Can a volunteer please read for us as usual? Okay, let me call names. Can um Emadi is just joining. Can I for only shall I make sure you I'm just joining you. Uh, just read what you have on your screen, question two. Okay. Question two. The global income treatment of Jimmy Airways Timothy. A foreign airline which operates in Nigeria for the year and the transport server shows as follows. You are required to determine the past year. Okay, that's fine. So let's go ahead. You have the transportation income from passengers, cargo, and mails. Outside Nigeria, then the Nigerian sales hundred thousand. You have transportation expenses. The question will be for us to determine which is taxable and which is not. I mean, which is allowable and which is not allowable. So we have um, less salaries allowable. The position disallowed. Then other disallowed expenses also disallowed. Right. I think this gives us um, a good way to start. You are required to determine the tax payable. Now, okay. So we have Jamie Harris, right? We have determination. Of tax payable, and this will be for 2016 year of assessment, right? Are we together, please? So, like as usual, I will do my workings 
the yeah. staff of the one. Bang, bang, bang. There's one ad book. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh, no. You don't want like, to look at my hand. That brown bag. Brown, brown bag. The power bag. bag. That, so that be here. It will be just a one. Right, so. For a ballet now. I said, check inside. We should have stand up. We have. All right, we have. Determination of global income, right? Now, we have, just to save our time, the global income here is 3.2 million, right? Right, that's the global income. Are we together? Step two, we need to determine the Nigerian income. We have yeah. The Nigerian income is what? That's only the income earned from Nigeria, and that is 100,000, right? That's 100,000. Are we together, please? Are we together, please? Yes, sir. Then step three will be for me. To determine the global adjusted profit. Global adjusted profit. And to do that is very also, it's also very simple. We have net profit is how much? Net profit is 400,000. Right? Add the allowed expenses. So for the allowed expenses, we have depreciation. Three twenty thousand. Order. That's how much? That's one eighty thousand. I should be up this. Then we have adjusted. Right. Then step four. Yeah. 
step four will be for me to determine the depreciation ratio, right? In this case, the division ratio is equal to 320,000 divided by uh, the global income is 3.2 million. Yeah. 320 over 3,200. Right? Step five will be for me to determine the adjusted profit ratio. That's for me to determine the adjusted profit ratio. That will be Nigerian income, GR, GAPR, go to Nigerian income. Well, just sorry. Adjusted profit, that's the global adjusted profit over global income times 100. So in this case, global adjusted profit is over global income is 2.2 resource. 900 over 3, 200, and 8%. So any question, please? Any question, please? Uh, please, sir. Yes. After that depreciation. Yes. Based on this, your GHD, GHD, is it cut or add? It's cut, so I'm supposed to do the capital allowance. So, determination, sorry. I was thinking I could do it. Determination of capital allowance. That is times global income. So yeah, all my adjusted profits. Just the profit here is what's the rate? Twenty eight percent times hundred thousand. That's twenty thousand less. Capital allowance. Right? For capital allowance, we've computed it to be 10,000. Right? So we then have total profit. Right?
right? Are we together, please? So yes, now the question, yeah? The question goes for us to tell us to determine the tax liability. So we say tax liability. And for tax liability, we have types of companies. Companies whose revenue is over 100 million is large company, right? So this company is also a large company. So we say CIT at 30%. Are you with me, please? Then TET is zero because it is not a resident company. Are you with me? Any question? Yeah, we see that. You know that our microphone is muted. What is it? I said we are with you. It's just that our microphone is muted. We are following, sir. So now, why didn't I compute special education tax? Sir, because it's not. It's not what? It's said because it's a foreign country. Okay, good. That so because it is not, yeah, that's fine. Because it is not a resident company. All right. So let's go to, do you understand what we've done so far? Yeah? Yes, sir. Now, illustration three. Let me solve question four for you as illustration three. All right. Question four as illustration three. Let's go ahead, please. Can a volunteer read for us? Or huh? let's solve question three. Please read. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah. Hello, sir. Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Um, this less capital allowance you said is ten thousand. Please, how do you get that ten ten thousand? That's ten percent of the Nigerian income. Okay, Nigeria income. Yeah. Thank you. So let's go ahead. Question three. Can a volunteer please read? Please read. The returns limited to foreign companies operating a fleet of passenger and cargo aircraft between Nigeria and Egypt. The operating results for the year ended July 2015 are as follows. The figures are clearly shown. The following additional. The following additional information is provided as listed. 
I didn't see the required. Okay. Is what? You are required one the total profit of the nursing profit trof limited for the purpose of Nigeria Nigeria exports. So my figure two, the liability to income taxation in respect to the relevant year of assessment. All right, so let's provide. We have donuts in Trump. Right? Competition of total profit. For the purpose yeah. right we have my walkies. All right, so I have one determine global income. Um, to cut the long story short, global income is fifty two or fifty two seven hundred point four. Right. Right. So step two. Determination. Yeah. And Nigerian income, we said Nigerian income is only income from Nigeria. So we have first one income from Nigeria, Amsterdam. Right, we have 10, 90, 80. Yeah, from Nigeria to Denmark. Yeah, so 
17810.12. Right. So it means our total income. Total Nigerian income. Are we together, please? Yes, we are with you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. All right, so that's it. So step three, then be for me to determine the global adjusted profit. And determine the global adjusted profit. Here we have net profit, right? How much is the net profit? 18,780.4. We have add. It's allowed expenses. The allowed expenses is what? Do we have any disallowed expenses? They said other expenses include donations to Boko Haram victims in Yobe. Through Red Cross Society, Red Cross is part of the approved body of uh, Schedule 5 of CETA, so it is allowed. Your next one, donation to Peace Democratic Movement. So, Peace Democratic Movement is disallowed. So we have donation to EDM. That's how much? 3.5 We have license fees paid to NCCs allowed. So, so that really, yeah, then we have depreciation. Depreciation is five one two zero. Five one two zero. Right. So it means we have right. So we have tax liability. Adjusted profit. Sorry, are we together? Yes, sir. We are with yes, you, sir. sir. That's the adjusted profit. Then the next one will be number four is for me to determine my depreciation. Ratio. The time deposition ratio is very simple. The position ratio is what? We have DR to be equal to depreciation. The global income. How much is the depreciation? Five one two zero. Global income is fifty two seven hundred point four and hundred. So you have I want to zero over five to seven hundred. Right? 
But they said that capital allowance has agreed is 0680. Can you see there? Hello? Hi. Hello, can you see there? Yes. Where they say capital? So when the capital allowance is agreed, the capital allowance to be selected is the capital allowance as agreed with the tax authority. So we have capital allowance. We go to seven seven six eight zero, right? So that would be the capital allowance to be selected. So we we'll come here and say adjusted profits. So next thing we'll go to do is determine the adjusted profit ratio. Right? What's Hello, the adjusted sir. profit? Are you with me? Hello, sir. Hello. Sir, it's like most, most of the illustrations you think they are for first of all are not complete for just theory. Yeah. Did I pick anything from question three at all? <laughs> I'm not sure, sir. Oh, Jesus. Okay, no problem. I will solve question three again. Let's quickly finish this then. Okay. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So I just have profit ratio. I just have profit ratio is what? So we have. Well, I just have profit ratio is equal to. Global. Global income. I'm doing right, right? So we have global adjusted profits equal to times 100. So what do we have? Adjusted profit is how much? 27,400.4 over, and the global income is 52,700.4, right? Times hundred, so we have one four hundred point four at fifty two seven hundred point four. Well, we have our come and see Nigerian income is how much? And then adjusted profit as equal to this times yes this capital allowance. Capital allowance is what? So we have total profit. Right? The next thing is is it a small company, large company, or medium sized company? The thing here is it's a small company. So we have an XM. Small companies are liable to tax at zero percent, right? We have CIT, so mm -hmm. 
So it's also a foreign company and will not be liable to test your education. Tax. tax liability. Any question? Any question? Any question? Any question? None yeah. for now. None, None for, for now. now. Yeah. All right, that's fine. So, please, can you scroll down the screen? Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. All right.
Are we, are we together? Yes, sir. Okay, that's fine. Any question? Any question, please? Any question? No question, sir. Okay, so let me move on to unit trust scheme. Unit trust scheme. So what is unit trust scheme? Unit trust scheme means any arrangement made for the purpose of providing facilities for preparation of the public or third party as beneficiary under a trust in profits or income arising from the acquisition or the management or disposal of current securities or any securities or any property whatsoever. So do you understand what all I just said? Hello? Hi, we are following, sir. Okay. So we said that for any trust to have effect, there must be three factors that must be available. First is that the trustees will be treated as if it is an investment company or as if it were an investment company. The second one is that the rights of the unit holders will be treated as shares in the company. The rights of the unit holders will be treated as shares in the company. And number three is that any income accruing to the trustees available to be paid to the unit holders will be dividend on such shares. So at the end of the day, if there's any amount to be shared among the trustees, such amount to be treated as if it were a dividend in their hands. So let's go to the definition of terms that we might come across as we look into mm -hmm. interest scheme. First is authorized unit trust. Authorized unit trust is a unit um, is like like you have authorized share capital in the private sector. Authorized unit trust is um, the amount of shares or the unit of unit trust that is authorized by the commission for the business to carry on, for the interest scheme to carry on. So like the trust share capital is the unit of shares that the government or the commission, the CAC, permits a company to have. Same, the authorized interest is the unit of shares that the interest scheme is permitted to have in order to carry out the business. Then we have a unit holder. A unit holder is a shareholder, so to say, so it's a person who owns a unit of um, ownership in a unit trust scheme, right? So then we have trustee. A trustee is the person uh, who, whose assets or whose property for the time being is subject to any trust created in pursuance of the schemes, schemes. So we have this as the um as the format for it then we go straight to illustration but before the illustration do you have any question do you have any question please uh this, uh, this unit trust. trust i can hear you please go ahead okay this unit trust uh is it about the theory aspect of it or we Yes, this is the calculation. I'm about to go into the calculation part of the course. Okay. Okay, no, so sir. let's start. No, but the idea is a, a, a unit trust scheme is usually treated like a normal company. No big deal. So let's go ahead. Can somebody please read? No, sir. Yes, please. So the previous one we did was what before we come to this unit trust. So we enjoyed the color state. The taxation of um, transportation and telecommunication business. Okay, thank you. All right, I have already read for as one group limited received an approved approval from the 
Security and Exchange Commission to float the unit trust scheme in April 2009. The unit trust scheme was subsequently registered and commenced business on 1st of January 2010 in the name of Aswane Unit Trust Limited. The following records were disclosed from the year ended at 1st December 2010, as stated. You are required. We are required to complete the task that we do for us. Okay. So we have uh, Aswani Group, Abi. Yes, sir. Right. No. Competition. Okay. Okay. Mm. Twenty twelve, twenty eleven. Yeah. Right, so let's profit. Let us see. Net profit is how much? Right? Add. Allowed. Expenses. There's a lot of expenses that we have. Are what? We have investment. We have money made expenses. We have depreciation. The remission of managers, we have other expenses. So the additional the following information was provided. Management expenses include loss on investment disposed. Loss on investment disposed is disallowed. So we have one seven five zero. Right, we have preliminary expenses. No expenses is one four five five. Right, donations like a building fund is allowed, succession to association of unit trust managers is allowed, fine is disallowed. Fines for late filing of returns. How much is that? That's no, ninety-eight for Other expenses include Hello, uh, special is up. Hello. Fine for late filing is uh, four hundred eighty thousand. Oh, sorry. Huh? Who's a gemma eggy for friend? Right, so we have 
Other expenses include special reserve for future investments. Special reserve How much is that? Yeah, we have new. Okay, yeah. Three, six, eight. We have. Right. Any question, please. Then we have. Yes. No. That is what? Nine three eight four. We have two two. Two two two. Right. So C I T at twenty percent. Okay. Two times this and T E T at two point five percent now three percent. Any question? Hello, sir. No, yeah, please. Uh, for knowledge, for knowledge purposes, I want to find out this new new computer system now. Yes, it's an asset. It's an asset. It's not supposed to be. Yes. There. Now we are, we are having it back. Now, is the authority not supposed to now calculate the capital allowance on that? Yes. Yes, it should have it should have been included in capital on assets. Yes, sir. Are you saying it has been included? No, we, yes, we don't know how they came about the capital allowance on asset, but we want to assume that all assets must have been considered before getting the capital allowance on assets. But for them not to capitalize it, that is the thing of it capital allowance. That's what what do you say? I said it, since they treat it as it is an expense, that means they've not they've not they didn't adjust for capital allowance. Yes, that's that may be correct, but I'm saying the assumption we are using now is that in reality, what happens is that once your asset is being removed, probably you class you capitalize an asset that was supposed to be. I mean, you expensed an asset that was supposed to be capitalized. It will be included in your um your capital allowance schedule in computing the total capital allowance that is what is obtainable in reality okay. but for us in this class we don't really know how they came about the capital allowance on asset it could be that they've actually considered that because what they did was they gave us the total capital allowance figure and they didn't give us the breakdown so it will be wrong of us to now start manipulating the capital allowance figure again uh, again sir now, how do we, is how do we know whether it's a small company or big company it as a profit or turnover? Is by their income, by their turnover. Okay. When a turnover is less than twenty-five million, is a small company. 
$125 million, but less than $100 million is a medium-sized company. And when it is greater than $100 million, it's a large company. Any question? Any question, please? Um, please. Is it possible to get the study text for this course? Study text, right? Yes. No problem, you will get it. Okay, thank you, sir. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. What other thing? What what other questions do you have? So we could. Because I'm running up for it. Actually, I was wondering, the total profit was two point nine million, and. Uh, 20% was calculated for the IT. Yes. Yeah, we considered their investment income, not the profit. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. If, if there is an uh, educational tax, if there is one, if, uh, if it's a big company, we have to charge a data. Is it on the total profit or adjusted profit? Accessible profit. Yes. Accessible, yes. accessible profit is definitely at total profit. Yes. What's it? I said that. Are you, is it that accessible profit is definitely at adjusted profit? No, cut out too many of them. Yeah, accessible profit is same as adjusted profit. Okay. So it's it's it's, it's computed based on the accessible profit. I didn't get you. Sir? I didn't get you. What's your question? What I'm saying is that if there is educational tax, because I know that this CIT, CIT is a, as a subject as a function of total profit. I'm not saying that if there is educational tax, if it's a tax of uh, profit, the three percent of the, the percentage is it on the total profit or adjusted profit? Yeah. yeah. It's on adjusted profit. Adjusted profit will be your will also be accessible profit. So thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Any other question? No. no problem. So in the absence of any other question, I would see you in the next class, right? Thank you, sir. OK. Thank you, sir. What's it? The next class is 3 p.m. So it's 2 30. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, you're welcome. I will enjoy your future. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.